Welcome to a new video on my channel and this is going to be an absolute dumpster fire of uh, various mailbag items that I mm, collected over the couple of months since the, since the last mailbag video. I still haven't managed to get away from the um, 199 or 179 deals so we are going to see a few of those and I think I'm going to switch between the uh, the listings and the actual items so we can keep track of what they are and you know what are the different options. So. Let's start with, um, it's not going to be like, you know, which was on the deal and which was on regular purchase, but uh, let's just start somewhere with the first product. And uh, it's this um, LED string. And uh, the, the only reason I bought this because I, uh, I was buying something else from the seller. And I usually look around if there is anything else that uh, worth picking up. It wasn't exactly cheap, but it is, uh, it's actually quite nice, I think. Um, it's like a holiday light and it runs on 220, so it mains powered. And I think I paid slightly, oh, sorry, different screen. So I think I paid slightly less than uh, this. Yeah, the whole thing was 16. Um, how do you, how do you look at the order, order details? Yeah, so I paid, okay. 1267 for this and um, oh okay I paid that much and so uh, I mean so far I'm I'm liking it and um, if you look at the device uh, sorry if you look at the product is this one and uh, it has hundred of these LED light bulbs and I think these are probably just uh, oh it looks like it's glued in place quite you know it's pretty solid and if I plug this in, bear with me, then um, yeah, that's how it looks like. And um, it has this controller and it has a settings for steady, which is the only setting I'm going to use. And it's a, you know, a very faint, uh, it's not the steady, that's the steady. So it's a very faint um, light. It looks nice. To be honest, I would rather just disassemble this whole thing and uh, get the controller out of it and then maybe just wire it to mains directly. But I don't really want to poke around in the mains um, on this one because as you can see, it is doing some driving because it, it flicker. I mean, it doesn't flicker for the, um, when you look at it um, in person, but on the video, it looks like it flickers, but actually it's not. So it's a nice, you know, warm white, and actually it does remember the uh, your settings. So if you unplug it and plug it back again, it will go back to the same setting as last time. And um, yeah, I will test this out. So far, um, I think it's good. Probably not the cheapest one, but still not a huge quality. Especially if you look, if you if I would disassemble this controller, it looks you know fairly fairly basic. It's basically just a blob chip and uh, four diodes and and I think there was a some transistors to drive the circuits because it is essentially um, what is it probably like three different circuits or four different circuits by the looks of the wires. So yeah, it was good. Um, that's okay. It's it's not a big deal. That was that wasn't the best purchase in this lot. So the next one is LED strips. So. This is a 12 volt, five meter, 300 LEDs. And this is this small uh, 3528 LEDs. And uh, I mean, it's just insanely cheap. I mean, I know this is probably the worst quality, the worst color index and everything. But if you need some LED strip with a, um, um, you know, that I you need to use temporarily, I think it's, it's good enough. And actually I have a display shelf where I uh, keep all my trains and I'm going to install these LED lights in the display shelf. Um, not to light up continuously, but um, you know, if it's in the dark and I need to find a couple of carriages and I don't remember which shelf they are on, um, it's just good and it's cheap. And if you're not going to use it for like 24 seven, I think it's going to last for a decent amount of time. As you can see, it's, you know, it's very basic, but it, it does the job. I have something similar already, um, which I've installed a couple of years ago. As I said, I'm only using it occasionally and it's working just fine. So I think for a simple application like that, you know, it's cheap, it's, it's okay. So that was 228 and for a five meter roll. And 
I purchased two of these fairly generic. So it came from the same seller as the Christmas light. Okay, next lot was this, uh, yeah. So I have a, a voltmeter from Anang, which was really cheap and it works just fine. It does the basics that I need. It doesn't have any extra fancy features and it's very easy to use. And I found this uh, voltmeter or this power meter from them. And again, this was pretty much the cheapest one that I could find. Uh, it was also some sort of deal or maybe it came with points or coins. And um, yeah, so it is voltage tester and everything. And what I like about this is, uh, so it does a few things. As you can see, it um, is going to show you if uh, you have any issues in your wiring, like your uh, neutral or your protected earth is not connected or your neutral and the live is uh, switched around. So it has this small display where it shows the line voltage. Um, I don't think it's necessary you know, I would use this much, use this a lot, but um, it's nice. And it also has a button to test the uh, the leakage. So if you have, uh, what is it, RCD or GFCI, then uh, you can test it here at the socket, um, at the socket as well. And I think at this point, I would like to make a service announcement. So if you are watching this video, pause this video and test your GFCIs because um, a couple of weeks ago I was in my distribution box and I pressed one of these test buttons and nothing happened. So that GFCI is dead. So I think this is a good reminder for everyone to test your GFCI. So go around your house, do those and then put them in the comments, you know, how many of yours have failed or if you if none of them failed and everything is working, then that's obviously good. So I think I'm going to use this uh, Function to test the GFCI and by the way, this is how it looks. I think it's a it's a nice package It looks nice and it shows you the you know the various faults uh, based on the three LEDs that are up here and then it you know line voltage and Yeah, you can test the button, you know, nothing special. You can buy this in all the different uh, plug types uh, like Europeans or the US and UK and one other reason that I like this is obviously with the European plug, you can plug it either way. So you, you can never be sure which one is neutral and which one is live. And sometimes when you have a plug um, or like um, uh, one of these leads that has a power switch, those, those power switches usually just only uh, disconnect one of the lines or if you install your own switch. And so this one is going to show you if the, um, if the neutral is... Uh, switched and the live is still on because then these LEDs are going to glow faint. So I think that's also a nice uh, function, especially if you live in Europe. So uh, I'm quite happy. I think it's going to be on one of those thing, one of those um, devices that is going to sit in a box and, you know, sometimes I just know where to reach them and if I quickly need to test something. So that's good. So let's look at the next piece. Uh, yeah, so I wanted some lights for my car when I charge my electric car because uh, especially if I arrive home at late, it gets a little bit dark and it's really hard to find a plug. So I wanted a light which has uh, solar and I wanted one where, where the solar panel is detached from the light itself because uh, um, <clears throat> Well, it's going to be under a small roof, so obviously the uh, the solar panel is not going to be any use in that under that roof. So this has a separate solar panel that I can install separately, and then it has a sort of like a waterproof plug, and that plug goes into this main unit. Uh, as you can see it here, it's quite a bit of wire, and then there is a lot of LEDs and the PIR sensor, and I think there is also there a um, an ambient light sensor and besides all these i have also given these two brackets so you can install these you can screw in the brackets and this will slide onto this holder both for the solar panel and the um, 
uh, and the light itself. So it's, it makes it a little bit easier to mount and service it or remove it if you need it for any reason. Other than that, it's, it's, you know, it has a button. So by default it's off and when you turn it on, then it turns on because it detects motion. And I think you can click again and that is going to be yeah, some lower power setting or ambient light setting. So something around that. And um, yeah, I tested it. Obviously, if it doesn't detect motion, then it turns off and it detects motion, it comes back again. And probably the battery inside is going to be good enough for, I don't know, I will test it. So the, the place I'm going to install it is not going to receive a lot of direct light. So I'm hoping that the battery is going to be good enough for those, I'm guessing maybe like half an hour a day. Um, whenever it detects motion. So obviously the small um, roof is going to shield it from detecting motion from further away. So I think it will survive in that sort of limited light conditions. And the solar panel looks decent size enough, probably like a cheap, very cheap solar panel, but well, hopefully it's going to be good enough. You have these different variants and I said, this is the cheapest one. Sorry about that. Next one. <laughs> Yeah, a very high quality folding knife. Um, yeah, three quid. But I think this was on the deal as well. So, but that was probably like 170 or 199. Or maybe it was that. Uh, I'm not sure. Not sure. Did I pay? No, I paid a full price for that. Uh, okay, let's look at this one. Uh, so, I wanted something small that I can hold, uh, keep in my um, jacket. So, if I need to open packages or you know, scare the, um, the noobs away, then I have a knife. It is probably like a fairly cheap quality. This is definitely not stainless steel because the magnet uh, um, attaches to it. Um, I might also need to sharpen it, um, you know, just to increase the factory sharpening. But, you know, it looks simple. It is a simple knife. I don't think I have to say anything more than this about this particular product. So let's move on. The next item oh, is uh, these um, carpenter pencils. And I've never used anything like this before. So again, it comes in uh, different variants. You can buy different packages. So I bought this one, but you have these packages. And again, these come up in the 199 deals a lot. So you definitely don't have to pay 10 quid for this. And I think mine was 199 as well. It was, um, yeah, so these three came at seven. 87. So let's look at the product. Yep. Um, uh, the main reason I wanted this because uh, I just have normal pencils that I usually use uh, in woodworking projects or if I want to mount something and that is impossible to reach. Like if I want to mount a like a waterproof, waterproof box, then you need something sharp to reach through the small, you know, uh, screw holes. And this is definitely going to do that. So I'm not really sure. This is probably like five, four mil or three mil, something like that. And you also get an extra, what is it? Six LEDs in the same price, all of them black. And this reminds me back in the, when I was a kid and it was still communism in Hungary, that we had similar products uh, where we didn't have the nice, um, you know, these pencils with a 0.5 LED in it. Most probably because the wonderful, you know, Soviet technology was not able to produce uh, um, graphite LEDs in, in a, you know, so small. It just it had to be junky like this. So my pen was literally like refillable pen was literally like this. It has like plastic, uh, sorry, metal case, and it came with a special sharpener to sharpen this big bit because. You know, that really defeats the purpose because you still had to sharpen this as often as a regular pencil. But um, yeah, I think for woodworking tool, it's just going to be fine. So I like it. And um, if I start using this a lot, probably I will buy another one or buy um, a different batch which, which comes in different colors. Good. Let's move on. Next one. Um, this was again some impulse purchase it was in 199 deal yeah 299 sorry so that was uh, that was 299 as well and that was 299 and uh, yeah it's just a piece of um, 
a solar panel with most probably a built-in battery and a string of light. And, oh yeah, you can see it also has different, oh sorry, again, I'm missing this uh, the screen. So, um, base uh, with most probably the battery and a small uh, switch and you can turn it on and it also does different modes but there is a steady mode somewhere um, okay that's it um, and yeah it works on solar panel and I think I'm going to install it I have a small like kids playhouse and I can see the lights from my um, office window in the evening and again I wanted to buy something where the solar I can mine the solar panel in a different location so it comes with these things that you can adjust the angle of and then you can just put this into the ground like this plastic stake and I think probably I'm going to drill a hole through this and then mount it on the um, on the playhouse and then let's stick the solar panel like this so it faces the sun uh, simple thing and it and by the way these are the type of leds that uh, are installed in a like a epoxy blob on the wire so i've used these before they're pretty nice uh, very discreet so i like this okay moving on i don't think we have a lot left <laughs> okay, so that was uh, in also in the one ninety nine, I think. Okay, yeah, one ninety nine for two. These uh, Tamagotchi toys, and I thought that I'm going to surprise my kids. Uh, it wasn't a big surprise, mostly because this product is a junk, and I only realized this after buying and doing a little bit of research, um, mostly because. Um, as I know now, there are three button Tamagotchis and there are these knockoff, which has the fourth button and the fourth button is reset. And the problem is that um, you can accidentally, um, you know, click this reset so easily, which then basically just resets your pet. Uh, even if you drop it, sometimes it triggers. So it becomes absolutely frustrating for the kids because they start playing around with it and then they reset the, uh, um, you know, their pet. Um, maybe in some words it's a good idea because then if your pet dies it's not going to be a throwaway electronic toy uh, because you can reset it but regardless I think this is probably just uh, you know it's just electronic junk and it's going to end up in the in the waste bin and I have seen this particular model um, is sold in thousands and I'm pretty sure there are like hundreds of these listings that are selling thousands of these which would most probably end up in landfill as well. Um, so I, that's why I said it's electronic waste. I mean, if you want to, probably you can take this apart and then remove this button so you can't accidentally press the reset, but they should have implemented something that you have to press this one at least like 10 seconds until it resets. It should have been so easy, but you know, these guys don't care about it. They, they don't bother. Just churn these out and then, you know, make a, I'm not even sure how they can make a profit. So this was $1.99 for two of these. And that was, you know, with shipping and everything and retail. So absolutely amazing. So I think it's, uh, yeah, volume manufacturing. And finally, the last item, which I think I have put somewhere, which, oh yeah, it's here. So I bought three of these Lilligo LoRa 32 boards because I want to play around with LoRa. I, I, oh sorry, I want to play around with mesh testing because I already have a couple of LoRa devices, but I want to play with mesh testing. So I purchased three of these so I can install mesh testing on them and I can just play around with them. So this is the I think probably this is the cheapest uh, LoRa version that uh, supports mesh testing and I wanted something which has a, I think all of them has a screen and it doesn't really have anything extra. Oh, it does have a battery connector so it can be battery powered so you can just put a one cell LiPo on it and um, that's pretty much it. So I have an idea. Oh, and then you get the antenna. Oh yeah, you have a battery lead and um, a couple of headers as well. So I have an idea that I want to play around with a, you know, with mesh testing and create 
a network where I could um, create a what is it like a signaling system for my trains for, well especially for the bigger ones so for the ride on trains so my idea is that I would have one of these units for every single signal so only thing I need to provide for the signals is power and then the data is going to going to travel on the LoRa network and the reason I picked mesh testing because mesh testing provides the infrastructure for you know um, sending the data and because it's a mesh network if I have multiple devices like if I have a bigger layout then um, I have one node which sends out the signal and that gets received by the second node and then it retransmits the signal so it's easy to create a big mesh network even if the layout is big and I've already done a little bit of research and there is a functionality in the mesh testing uh, firmware that you can uh, easily attach a simple microcontroller to this over uh, TTL serial and a mesh testing is going to relay every single message onto that serial line so you can keep the the stock mesh testing firmware on the ESP32 and have a cheap Arduino mini which is going to do the processing so I would have messages to you know like red signal to a you know node one or signal one and that's going to be received by the LoRa board and that sends over the same message to the ES, uh, sorry, the Arduino and that's going to operate some relays which turns the red signal or something like that. So I think that will be, that will be interesting. And of course, then the whole thing is going to be controlled by Node-RED while well, everything is controlled by Node-RED when it comes to me. Um, I think it will be a fun project. I'm not sure if, we were, if I would have time for it because I have so much, you know, other stuff that I should be working on, but um, in case I do have the time, I have the hardware now and I, check and, and I can just start working on it instead of waiting for a month for these things to arrive from China. So that was the idea behind it. It might come at some point, it might not. Um, by the way, these units, I bought the um, 868 version, that's the uh, lower frequency for Europe. So that was 27, I think I paid slightly different. Yeah, 2237, so 22.34 I paid for it when I purchased this. So the price have gone up a little bit, but uh, probably it's going to come down again once the um, uh, 11, 11 sale starts in, in just a few weeks or maybe just a week. So that's it. I think that would be the, you know, the current um, mailbag. I'm going to leave purchasing links for all of these in the video description but um, a reason I wanted to get these out because I want to install some of these in the garden. I have some time in the afternoon so this is going to get installed today and this solar light is going to get installed today especially because we still have some sunlight so at least these would, uh, that would allow these things to charge before the night comes today. So that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.